What up, y'all? It's Coffee back with the news, man. Tap in. Let's talk, everyone. A lot of topics to jump off into. And first things first, we discussed this the other night on a live, man. Make sure y'all are tapping into them lives where y'all can chop it up with coffee. We have a lot of great discussions on all different topics. You feel me? But, um, you know, Russia and the Ukraine, all that transpiring over there. I want to know everyone's thoughts about this. We're seeing a lot of videos um, jumping off on social media, um, reportedly from over there, from what's going on. Now, there's been reports as well that uh, some some of the videos are, are, are alleged to be fake. Like this one that you're seeing in this uh, in these different videos playing in this little segment here, the one that looks like laser beams in the sky or whatever. It was going around social media and it was titled like Ukraine fights back against Russia, um, you know, blows up Russian aircraft or something to that effect. Comment in. Let me know if y'all seen that video. There's reports that this is uh, fake or some people are saying it's it's footage from an old video game or it's footage from a totally different incident or something like that. There's other videos of like saying, yo, Russia invading Ukraine. Um Russian soldiers who have like, like on a parachute or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know all the um, exact terms I'm supposed to use when, with the military and everything, but like Russian paratroopers making TikTok videos on their, you know, after they jump out of the aircraft and are, are set to invade the Ukraine and ish like that. It's like, damn, what the hell? Like with all this going on and social media being what it is today. It's just kind of crazy uh, what we're seeing. But I want to know your guys' thoughts about this. Like, do you be um, believe that there is a lot of fake stuff? Um, what is your thoughts about just the whole situation in general uh, that's going on over there? Like, real talk. Uh, don't shy away. Jump in the comments. I really want to know what everyone thinks about this. You know, a lot of people um, feel a little uneasy that this could be a situation that's going to turn into like a world war three or whatever you know like do you feel that way let's talk about it all in the comments below and once again don't forget to tap into them lies with coffee then uh next up man <clears throat> real quick i uh, reported the other day um you know c mac locked up in a county jail no bails got a detainer on him has a hold because he has uh, multiple cases, he, he has a violation, so he, he can't get bailed out. And as we were um, discussing before, his manager, ODM Slim, went live, had C-Mac on the phone. And one of the things they discussed was how they were not feeling WAC 100 uh, putting C-Mac's. I guess they were upset about him putting some of C-Mac's information out there and um, just... How Wack was talking about he was going to try to, you know, bail uh, C-Mac out. They were like, yo, fuck that uh, crater face Custer face ass individual. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what C-Mac said. ODM Slim was a feeling that he felt that, you know, he's trying to capitalize off C-Mac's momentum. Well, they ended up bumping heads on Clubhouse. As y'all know, Clubhouse 100 stays on Clubhouse very strategic moves, as I always point out to y'all. But um, comment and let me know if y'all seen that um, uh, or you heard that conversation between them. ODM Slim was just going off on Wack, and Wack was just saying, "Yo, I got business uh with him. You know what I mean? We're trying to get this blue face boxing match going on and all that." And they were like, "Yo, we'll like, I'll handle." my own artist we got this covered over here keep his name out your mouth like it was it, it got truly heated like you know how a lot of ish on the internet you know is kind of just for the internet or for like people are turning up a little bit for entertainment purposes or 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 different things them trying to push their careers and momentum it didn't feel like that to me it felt like odm slim really was just flat out mad like he he was not feeling um that whack posted about the situation and was speaking about it. And then uh, the conversation went on for a while. Dude dipped out in that Lupe girl that seen me. Y'all always hear him talking about Lupe. I know Jumper, he was saying she's lining up all the shorties for C-Mac. Well, it got more heated because, uh, you know, whack kind of started disrespecting that girl, calling her slow, calling her stupid. And um, ODM 
tapped back in and just went off. I don't know. Like, this is wild. What do you guys think about this? You know, uh, Wack was like, yo, I was just trying to do business with the guy um, and, and, and help him get bailed out. You know what I'm saying? He was saying that, well, maybe um, before him finding out that C-Mac had a detainer because of the violation and couldn't come home, he thought maybe they just um, didn't have the means to get him out. And they, like, they're like, yo, fuck all that. Don't worry about it. I don't know. I want to know what y'all think about it, man. But I don't think we're going to see that C-Mac blue face boxing match. Um, as I stated before, though, there was reports that they were having trouble put that together because of having C-Mac travel. So I don't know, y'all. Tap in. Let me know what y'all think. Then we got another situation here that's really kind of crazy and bizarre to me. What do y'all think about this? You know, this is pertaining to Milk 7-4. Uh, love them, hate them. Y'all know how it goes with milk. A lot of people like milk. A lot of people can't stand milk. Um, you know, as he tries to uh, tries to continue to navigate his way through this uh, internet digital space and, you know, push his platform to that 100K mark. Um, there's been so much ish going down. Um, first off, we saw someone um, allegedly come to um, Milk 74's crib again. Some people are saying that wasn't the right building or some are saying that wasn't the right floor. I don't know. That's crazy when it gets to front door or coming to people's cribs like that's that's wild, man. You know, shit gets heated online, you know, but um, also there's this crazy situation here where Milk 74 is calling out this guy Manzo. Right. And a lot of people ain't feeling this guy's style because he had worked with uh, he does these like hood vlogs, I guess. And he had worked with Slim 400 shortly before Slim 400 uh, being killed. R.I.P. Slim. Well, um, you know, these these uh, screenshots have popped out where he was trying to get Treyway 6K's uh, address and milk starts reporting on that then next thing you know there's these screenshots that i think were fake uh where milk was supposedly talking ish about the treyway guy i i don't know i wasn't buying those ones you know what i'm saying i i really they just did it didn't seem legit to me and it all seemed funny style that as soon as milk is um reporting on this those come out you know but nonetheless, uh, this Manzo dude, I guess, is going to no jumper now. Oh, and real quick before we carry on, too, guys, what do you, what does everyone think about all the different uh, Hoover rappers? Do you like their their music? Um, the, the what's the guy Trey Way, Six K, um, Young Threat, and uh, Jab Five, who's in prison? I th like who do you like? Do y'all rock with their music? Who do you think's the nicest? Um, I think they're all pretty talented. It's so crazy though with this. Uh, younger artists younger generation of artists you know what i'm saying like gang banging on the track or whatnot you know it's like civilians like myself who just want to vibe out to the music it's like it, it can get kind of awkward you feel me but um let me know if y'all like them and who you think is the best but anyways milk's point out now how how did this guy um get caught up in this in you know adam 22 is like yo we got to get you on no jumper asap Milk is ain't feeling that. He says that's some fluckery and some bullish. Uh, the Treyway guy seen speaking about it too. As um he was saying, I think I seen a video of him saying he wants to go back to no jumper after that guy gets on no jumper. But that's wild, right? Asking for people's addresses. And that looked legit to me. And people this guy said too in this one post that Milk pointed out, this makes no sense. He says, yo, like a couple days have passed or whatever, and no one's came out and said, Yo, he sent me the address. Like who would who would come out and say that like that right i i'm i'm not understanding it who would who would admit to taking place in that uh, or taking part in all that um shadiness behind the scenes it makes zero sense to me but what do y'all think about that man you guys think adam 22 is wrong for trying to get him on now i mean listen we know how it goes controversy sells beef sells and everything but it's like is 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 that all that uh this individual brings to the table when going on no jumper like do you think that's an odd choice for 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 all this i don't know tap in let's talk about it all all those milk headlines there in this little segment let's talk about it all below all right y'all you guys see the nature the nature boy rick flair strutting still doing his thing at 73 years old he just had his birth birthday um a lot of people wishing him a happy birthday online 
It's crazy, man. The Nate's still going, still turned up, still got all that energy um, at 73. We know he just, it was not looking good for him like a year ago, man. He had a serious heart problems, but here he is, you know, uh, an, another year of life in the, you know, the story of the book of the Nate. Okay. But, um, but Joe, what do y'all think though? We saw, what was that? Six months ago or so, somewhere around there. The Nate started catching some heat when that episode of Dark Side of the Ring aired, um, where some of the things that were being said about the plane ride from hell, there was a lot of people saying, yo, the Nate needs to be canceled with his old ass, uh, that he was on some real wicked, um, deviant type behavior. Some people felt they said, man, they don't believe it. Some people felt that the story was changed. Um, I don't know. Who knows? We know one thing. Um. The plane ride from hell definitely was real, definitely happened, definitely went down, and definitely was something that, uh, you know, Vinny Mac tried to use his power to kind of, I don't want to say totally cover up, but kind of like keep from coming to the forefront of the news, you know? But what do you think about it all? Do you still respect and salute the Nate? Did that make you lose respect for him? Do you think he's a wicked individual uh, or are you still, you still flucking with the Nate? Tap in. Then real quick, man, we know with uh, Don to two on the way, still not out, though, I guess, man. Uh, you know, as I was covering that the other day, that whole event, the Don to two event that uh, Ye was doing, Game was there. You know, Game's like really trying to bring his career back, hard body. But in the midst of all this, a lot of people are um, posting online about like work they did with Kanye or whatever. And this just caught my eye. Um, I never knew this. But um, you see, Caniva D12 took the post in to the ground to let everyone know, yo, look, D12 World off the album, D12 World, uh, you know, title track off the, off the album uh, produced by Kanye West. And we had a ball um, working with them. And as I pointed out before, a lot of people don't know, you know what I'm saying? Ye been in the game a long, long time. Um you know, there's a lot of people that think he just started when College Dropout came out. Like, that was his, his first album. He had, when, when when Ye first got in the game, he was strictly a producer and was making them dope beats. I, I pointed out to people before, they don't know Ye was a producer on the Mace Harlem World album. Real talk. And it's, it's wild to see uh, what his career has tra transitioned into, like, as him as an artist um, over the years, you know, like. It's crazy, right? But comment with a track that like you first, like going, dating back as far as it goes, where uh, Ye was on production on the beat. Comment. And uh, what do y'all think about that D12 World track as well? Let's talk. And then last on the news, man, y'all see the footage playing here. You guys remember that? That was a crazy ass play, man. Um, missed field goal by Feely. That's a live ball when it's caught in the field of play, right? Devin Hester looking like he's going to take a knee and just pulls like, you know what I mean? Gives him that little hesitation and just boom, takes off, sprints over towards the sideline and he's gone, man. Devin Hester, he was a, he was a beast with the return game. And, um, you know, he's been out of football for over five years. So that's the elegy after it's five years before you're eligible to be nominated to go to the hall of fame. And he made it through the preliminary rounds all the way to the finals, but got shot down. He is not going to make the hall of fame. Um, but you know, there's always next year. I know a lot of people are mad though. I always share with y'all. I'm a diehard bills fan. Um, anyone else who's a bills fan or, you know, just really remembers Andre Reed, who was a hell of a receiver. It took Andre Reed like a whole decade to get in the Hall of Fame. They kept shooting him down, you know. But uh, Hester, man, that what an exciting player, man. Um, you know, he, he's the, the the greatest return man of all time. He got nineteen punt returns or kick returns for t touchdowns, fourteen punts, and uh, twenty just all what interceptions. Uh, re Miss field goal like this one we saw here and fumbles and, and different stuff combined like those are crazy numbers man um Hester was dangerous he, he was fast as fluck you know what I'm saying he, he, he Hester gets that ball can uh beat a couple guys catch the right block he's taking it to the house you know 
I remember when he broke uh, Dion's record. I want to say this was back in like 2013 or 2014, one of his last years in the NFL. I think he was playing for Atlanta at that point in time. He did the Dion dance and all that. But um, yeah, I don't know. He ain't getting in the Hall of Fame this year. Comment. Let me know if you guys agree. And comment which is your uh, favorite memories of uh, Hester, you know. Big plays he had and all that. But that's it, guys. Catch you on the next one. Had to, ran kind of long with this one, but been having a lot going on. Haven't been able to get to the content, so stay tuned. Much more content is on the way. It's coffee, talking music, news, sports, current events, life, and much more, y'all. And I'm up out of here. Peace.